here. Well, probably the big one would be uh, the Bandai Entertainment announcement that they are downsizing, is how Anime News Network described it, which is, I think, a little um, uh, uh, simplistic. I mean, gosh, it really... You know they're they're not completely shutting down, but um, they have, they're basically they they've canceled all of their future full scale releases. Uh, everything that they've got to that they that they've published so far, they will still keep in print. They'll still keep making more of the things that they you know more copies of the things that they've already uh, produced. But they're not going to do anything uh, beyond that. And from what um, I can tell, there's a, a good interview with Ken Iadom, Iadomi from Meta Entertainment on ANN.com. And um, he basically said that the problem is that the uh, you know the the, Amer the anime business in America has shrunk a lot. You know, people aren't buying anime as much as they used to, and so it just doesn't make sense for Bandai to have a full American subsidiary, you know, pumping out uh, anime. Now the thing is, and this is the one thing that I think a lot of folks got uh, got confused about: Bandai Entertainment, Bandai America, is not Bandai. Namco Japan, you know, they're still going to be making anime, they're still going to be developing all this kind of stuff, um, you know, th there will still be anime, it's just that there, there will be no Bandai affiliate, Bandai subsidiary in America licensing it and releasing it over here. Um, you know, th it's going to have to be picked up by Funimation and Section 23 and those other companies will have to be licensing those things. Funimation lawsuit. Um... So Funimation has basically sued Section 23. Section 23 is a, an anime licensing dubbing company. Um, much, and then they basically grew out of 80 Vision. And that's actually the story. So basically what happened here is that uh, a couple of years ago, uh, ADV Films and 80 Vision was uh, an anime licensing company that had been around for years and years and years. And um, suddenly one day they just dropped off the face of the earth and... You know, most of the employees started itself back up as this company called Section 23 with other, other subsidiaries and so forth. And there was speculation at the time that, um, yeah, Seraphim Studios and other things like that are all, all part of that. Um, and there was speculation at the time that they were reorganizing because of um, leadership roles and, and cer certain people had control of the company and this is a way they could kind of oust people. Um, what Funimation uh, claimed, uh, they, they filed a lawsuit on November 4th, 2011, uh, claiming that basically, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, so don't, you know, this isn't legal uh, advice, but uh, basically AD, ADV licensed a bunch of stuff from Funimation and, uh, uh, and various anime works uh, through kind of a third party. Um, and then... ADV did this whole reorganization thing, dropped off the face of the earth, started back up again, and um, uh, um, has continued to make money off that stuff, um, but never paid. So they licensed all this stuff, made the money off of it, and then reorganized and never paid any of their bills. And AD, or I'm sorry, Section 23's folks are now claiming that, well, those licenses were made by a different company. They're made by ADV. We're not ADV. So, yeah. Um, and ADV is basically saying, or, or Funimation is basically saying, you yeah, know, um, this needs to go to, to court. Um, the statute of limitations did technically, um, uh, 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 did expire. Uh, the thing about the statute of limitations, though, is that, you know, these things often take a while to work their way to court. So sometimes, you know, there's, there's precedent to saying, okay, you know, we spent the past 18 months going back and forth. Um, you know, we learned about this at, at this point. Then we, you know, we spent the past 18 months going back and forth with them trying to work out a deal. They said they would do a deal. Um, they didn't. Um, you know, and we went back and forth. And, then, and now finally we've had to say, okay, we have to go to trial. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying that happened. That's one of the reasons why it can take you know, a year or two or, or more than that to continue on. Um, so that's one of the things is that uh, is is what all that means. And basically, uh, looks like Funimation wants to go to court. They're not going to try to settle this. They want to actually show this in, in the court. So that's actually kind of interesting. Ona is going to be delayed for two weeks. Uh, the last episode uh, uh, was going to be uh, come out on uh, uh, in late January. Now it's going to come out on February eighth. But the nice thing is that the creators said to make it up to our fans, we're going to hold a special uh, event. And we'll bring out some of the folks involved in the anime. We'll do a special screening. 
Um, and you can kind of come out and watch it with folks from the anime, which is awful nice of them. It's interesting. Um, we now have some details about Kyoto Animation's uh, next series um, uh, called Hyoka, which is going to be a mystery series about uh, a boy named Hotaro, who's kind of passive, um, but is ordered to get into a classic literary club at his high school and uh, gets involved with the other uh, characters there and there's a mystery and so forth and so on. What's interesting is that it's got the, uh, it's being written and directed by the writer and director respectively of Full Metal Panic. Um, two guys who are very close actually, worked together quite a few times. Um, so Shoji Gato, the writer of Full Metal Panic, um, who also did um, uh, some bits of uh, Lucky Star, and, and um, Haruhi uh, will be writing. And um, Yasuhiro Takamoto, who not only did uh, Full Metal Panic, also directed a little film you may have heard called The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. Yeah. So he'll be directing. And uh, Kohei Tanaka will be doing the music. He's been doing anime music for decades. A very well-respected guy. He did the music for 8th MS Team, Gundam 8th MS Team, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, he's done the music for One Piece, um, Sakura War, Sakura Tyson. Uh, what else on here? Um, Gao Gaigar, King of Braves. Um, Dirty Pair. Gosh. Um, all sorts of different anime series. Um, hmm. Oh my goddess. Very cool. So that's a pretty all-star cast, at least for those, those, those main... Oh, yes, Ryukishi07, the creator of Higurashi, Higurashi When They Cry, has announced he's going to be working on a new story. Um, and I don't think he's got a title yet. Um, yeah, no, no, no title yet. But he is working on a, a new story, original setting, completely world, completely different world than any of the stuff he's, he's done before. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes in terms of how he does, um, uh, how he does a completely original setting. And story. here's some fairly large news. Fox announced this is pretty awesome. As in Fox, the TV channel has announced they're going to do a Saturday night. Um, late night animation block starting um, in uh, January of next year, which would be 2013, I believe. Which is, um, and, and, and the thing is, they've gotten some uh, folks who worked on Adult Swim and Cartoon Network to head that project. Yeah. 